It was a miracle then. It'll be a miracle now. There's nothing like, like totality. Uh, it's, it's almost otherworldly, <laughs> literally. Like nothing you've ever seen before. This is something that nature has uh, provided for us. Uh, it rivals any of the natural wonders on Earth, and so it should be enjoyed. Again, is just witnessing the awesome majesty, and I got fascinated by it. Yes, indeed, we have waited 47 years for this event to happen again in South Carolina. Now we're just hours away. I'm joined tonight by South Carolina's weatherman and NASA eclipse expert Jim Gandy. Jim, we'll be getting to the glasses in just a few moments because still lots of questions about glasses, what's good, what's bad. But first and foremost, people are wondering what the forecast is going to be like tomorrow. Are we going to be able to witness this total solar eclipse? And you know, that's been a big question from the very beginning. We always knew it would be dicey here in South Carolina at this time of year. So let me show you what you can expect. First of all, let's go through the time starting with the partial eclipse. It starts at 1 11 32. That's 32 seconds in Newberry, 1 13 here in Columbia, 1 15 in Manning, and then we head toward totality, which occurs at 2 240 in Newberry, 241 in 54 seconds, so almost 242 here in Columbia, and 244 down in Manning. Now notice, Aiken, Camden, Bishopville never get in totality. Now it's not going to last long. In um, by uh, 242.48 in Newberry, it ends. 244.25 seconds here in Columbia, it ends, and then at 246 down in Manning. It ends. So, what are we expecting? Well, uh, then we go into the partial effect, uh, eclipse on the other side, and everything uh, ends between 4:05 in Newberry and 4:08 in Manning. We have been watching the computer models, and I'm going to show you two different models. One knows that the eclipse is happening; the other one does not. The first one is this one that we use every day, and it does not know that the eclipse is going to occur. So we wanted to see, well, what does it have to say? This is what they expect around 5.30 in the morning. We put it into motion. Notice it's projecting that there may be some clouds around, and certainly down in the coastal plain, some clouds with the possibility of some showers. Now let's go forward to almost totality. Notice. Uh, it still has some clouds in our area, possibility of some rain, and it continues that into the afternoon hours. If you see there is a countdown clock going on behind us, that is the countdown to totality. The actual partial eclipse will begin shortly after 1 o'clock tomorrow. More on that in a moment. Also, we're on Facebook Live right now, and we have viewers from all over the country watching us right now. Jim, people in Oklahoma and Tennessee and other parts of the country, and of course across the state of South Carolina are tuned in. They'll have some questions later in the broadcast. Yeah. We're going to get to that. One of the questions I actually saw on there a moment ago is something we want to talk about. What's going to happen tomorrow as we start building up to totality? Well, let's start with that because first of all, one o'clock in the afternoon, assuming that we can see the sun, it's going to be sunny. That's just the way it is as you head in toward the eclipse. Uh, it's bright sunshine, and in this particular case, we expect clouds to be forming, so it's probably going to be partly cloudy. Then the moon starts to move between the Earth and the sun, and that's when we start our partial eclipse. And as it progresses, you're going to see more and more and more of the sun disappearing. In fact, we're going to get to a point to where there's only a very thin sliver of the sun that's still left around uh, the, the, the moon. These are called Bailey beads, and it's actually the sun's rays shining through the valleys of the moon itself. Now, you still need your glasses on right. when you get to this point, but very quickly we will go from this point to totality. And when we get to totality, that's when you're going to see the corona. Now, you may not see the corona exactly like this, but I wanted to show you this image. This obviously is professionally done. But when you see the corona, 
you're going to see something you have never seen before and it's going to be the solar atmosphere. That's what the corona is. It is much hotter than the surface of the sun and it's made up of plasma which is streaming off from the surface of the sun and the first time you see it, it takes you back right. because all of a sudden you're seeing the sun in a whole different light. I was telling one of our producers earlier, uh, traveling in the city of Columbia tonight, to me it looked like a Friday night in some areas of the city yeah. because we have so many visitors in town already. We do have a number, but I, you know, my biggest concern has been the people that are just coming in for the day. Right. And that traffic's coming in tomorrow. In fact, in Santee, that may be the case tomorrow. The bumper to bumper traffic they were expecting earlier today. Well, it didn't quite pan out, but tomorrow could be a different story as travelers along that busy I-95 take a break perhaps to view the eclipse there. Lana Harris has more on that tonight. Here we go. We put them right over here. The eclipse excitement in Santee, South Carolina is real. And we've got them right here. You can tell by the t-shirts in Santee General Store. We're selling them all. I mean, I don't have that many left, as you can tell. That cashier Mary Smith says won't seem to stay on the rack. We've done sold out of them two, three times. But you couldn't tell by the traffic. I mean, no traffic at all. Jennifer Mahalis drove from Florida with her two daughters to see the eclipse. I packed five outfits so I could choose from. And was shocked at how many cars weren't on the road. We heard rumor that it was going to be horrible, but surprisingly, we made perfect time. In fact, we're coming from um, below Savannah. Joey Biner is not here to see the eclipse. No. Because he thought there'd be too much traffic. Trying to get back up to Virginia. My daughter starts school here soon, so we thought we'd probably be best for us to get up on the road. But Biner says he's seen the drivers. We noticed a lot of cars that had like Eclipse or a bus. And knows they're coming in droves. It's going to get worse probably in the morning hours. Until then, these drivers say they'll just enjoy the calm before the storm. Lana Harris, News 19 WLTX. And back here in Columbia with the possibility of a million or more visitors around the Midlands, city police are going to be stationed at various major intersections. As of right now, there are no planned street closures for tomorrow either. They're simply asking for patience for everyone traveling. And you've got a big concern about traffic tomorrow. I do, because I'm already hearing it from people that have been calling me today along the coast. They're getting nervous about the possibility of being able to see that total eclipse down in the Charleston right. area. And some are already making plans of leaving before daybreak to come up to Columbia. And that was part of my right. worst nightmare I remember. was the mass movement of people. And now I think we're about to see it. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about parking in downtown Columbia. Also, we're going to be talking more about these, the Eclipse glasses that are like gold right now. Where can you find them? We've got the latest on what we know in just a moment. Well, going into the commercial break, we we're talking about an increased traffic in downtown Columbia this evening to prepare for the many people coming. The city of Columbia says they're going to have parking garages and surface lots open through tomorrow. Event parking rates may apply. They will be uh, cash only on street parking will operate as normal. Now, I want to get to something that's been a cause of a great concern for a lot of people, and that are these eclipse yeah. glasses yeah. Um, right now tonight. Uh, where, where would you find Eclipse glasses? Well, there are several events going on tomorrow, uh, like the State Museum. They're sold out. They're sold out. The um, Spirit Communications Park, they've, they've sold out all their seats. Uh, we still have some spots available out at the uh, State Fairgrounds with right. the South Carolina State Fair Total Eclipse tailgate. And uh, glasses will be given out there as long as supplies last. There's been a big controversy, though. There's been a big controversy when it comes to some glasses because some glasses are simply not certified. Right. Uh, and there's just they're out and out fakes. They are basically it, it, here's what NASA wants everybody to do. They want you to check the ISO number. There it is. One, two, three, one, two, dash two. But there's more than that because there have been some manufacturers just copying that directly off the Internet. Right. So go and find the there should be a manufacturer on those glasses the manufacturer is also important because then you want to go to our app and check it against the approved manufacturers from nasa who have done the homework right. and have made sure that those manufacturers are manufacturing safe glasses if it's not one of those 
we can't tell you whether they're safe or not. Right. And that's the problem because your vision is too important to trust on something that's questionable. We have looked through both pairs of these glasses. I want to show them again on TV. We've looked through, like this is a pair of glasses I think one of our producers got at a gas station. Right. We've looked through them. We can barely see any lights in our studio. I'm not trying to harp on one particular. Right. But these are the glasses Richland County put out. Right. And we've looked through them. We see plenty of light yeah. coming through these glasses. Your recommendation last week was if don't you have, use them. don't use these. And you know, it was Chuck who broke the Chuck story. Chuck Ringwald. That Chuck. Chuck broke the story that those glasses uh, had also been provided to the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. And when they contacted the supplier, they couldn't verify the safety. So they said, do not use those glasses under any circumstances because of safety concerns. Right. There's your red flag. Well, we're not, again, singling out anyone, but, um, but in a way, I guess we, we are with this instance because this was brought to our attention and we've, we've compared. Yeah. I mean, there is really no comparison between these two glasses. But also, what's even more disturbing is this is not the only instance where we have seen that. Right. There, we've already seen several places. In fact, I have a pair of glasses in the weather center that has the ISO number, has a manufacturer, but it's not one of the approved manufacturers that NASA has on their website. Well, let's talk about something else. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about welding glasses, yes. welder's glasses. Right. My dad was a welder many years ago, uh, and you know I used to look through his welder's glasses, you know, the welding. And yeah. They seem to protect the eyes pretty good, but will they work in this instance tomorrow? Not all of them. Not all welding glasses are the same. Yeah. The, you have to have, uh, uh, you have to know the shade number. The shade number has to be 12 or higher. If it doesn't have that, then, then they are not safe for viewing the eclipse. Well, as we mentioned, as for uh, where you can get glasses, it is very hard to give you an answer tonight. Many places that had them are quite frankly sold out and it's just too hard for us to keep up to date with who has what at this point. So at this point tonight, it's recommended that if you have a pair of glasses, you share it with your family. Uh, and keep in mind, if you are in an area where there will be totality, meaning the moon shadow completely blocking the sun, you can view that part without wearing glasses tomorrow. The bottom line is you need to wear your glasses before and after totality, not during. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. It's like once it's total mm -hmm. in the Midlands. Once totality right. happens, you then you have to take them off. You don't need the glasses yeah. because if you're wearing, if you're wearing these glasses during totality, you're you going to see, see darkness. Yeah, you will see what anything. you're going to see. If you're in an area that's outside of totality, you never take the glasses off mm -hmm. because it's never safe. It's only here those of us who are going to be seeing the total eclipse can take the glasses off. But if you've got any question whatsoever on those glasses. I'm here to tell you, you don't need them. For totality. For to well, not only that, yeah. you don't even need them to watch the partial eclipse yeah. because there are ways to look at the partial eclipse. And of course, I've shown this one. This is on our website. This is the easiest way to do it. But you take, uh, take something that's kind of firm. You don't want a, a flimsy <laughs> piece of paper. And all I did was punch a little hole, a small hole in this, and I right. can project it against the second plate, and that will show me the eclipse as it occurs. Now, there's another one, and this is great for kids. We, I tried this today. You take two fingers, you take two fingers, you crisscross it, you move your fingers in so you get almost a pinhole effect. And then I found something again today you've got in your kitchen that yeah. is a, an eclipse viewer and we never knew it. What is that? You take a colander. Now, yeah. you know, the colander's oh, got yeah. a bunch of holes in the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Okay, if you take that outside and the sun shines through all those holes, it will project an image of the eclipse on the ground. Now, I also, I want you to do one other thing. Watch the shadows during the partial eclipse because the sun coming through the leaves of trees will form almost a pinhole effect and the shadows cast by that tree will be in the form of a partial eclipse. Your science lesson for the night. It's so easy. Courtesy I, of Jim Gandy. Try different <laughs> ways to observe this because it's fascinating. Of course, you can also just stay inside if you want in the nice, comfy, cool air, air, air conditioning inside your we home. We don't have that option. And you can watch the eclipse 
as it happens, we have a special lens with our camera tomorrow. We're going to show it to you live on the air here at News 19. Let's take a quick break, but when we come back, there's been so much interest in this eclipse. We're going to hear from another NASA expert as to why. That and more coming up. And welcome back as we continue to talk about the total solar eclipse happening tomorrow. You know, 1970 was the last time parts of the Midlands here were, uh, took part in a total solar eclipse. That was so you, long ago. And you saw that. I, I, I saw it through the window. My grandma <laughs> didn't want me to leave the house, yeah. you know. 1970, March 7th. It's like, oh, no, no, you know, stay in the house. I was in Jacksonville at yeah. the time, and the uh, eclipse was 97% total where yeah. I was. Well, it was 100% total in Sumter. It's like 99% here in Columbia. Right. But again, that was 47 years ago. Yeah. Since then, we've known about this eclipse oh, yeah. for years and years oh, and years, and it's been slowly building, and there's so much interest in it right now. I had the opportunity to... Uh, speak with Dr. Dr. Lika mm -hmm. at NASA uh, about why there's so much interest in this eclipse. Well, I mean, shouldn't there be? This is our star, right? The sun, and we are actually for the first time going to be able to see its outermost atmosphere called the corona, and we live in the outer atmosphere of this star. So obviously we are super excited and people along the path of totality, 14 states, 2,500 miles long and about 70 miles wide. You know, if you get to these sites, you're going to see this incredible outer atmosphere of the sun. How can you not be excited? And, exactly. And, and by the way, my full interview with Dr. Lika and Dr. Nikki are on our website. There's been so much excitement about this eclipse tomorrow that people have been coming here from all over the country and all over the world. Nick Jones has that story tonight. We're just under 24 hours away from the total solar eclipse here in downtown Columbia. People from across the state, across the country, and even across the world have come here to downtown to experience the event. And I actually caught up with one person who's from Puerto Rico who says he had to come down to Main Street to check out all the action. Main Street, they have the food fest, going into the business, visiting the restaurants, visiting the hotels, visiting the whole area, and learning from the culture that, uh, that your city has to offer. I'm hoping for a great, great turnout tomorrow. Ernest Lee, known as the Chicken Man, is in the Vista selling some unique artwork for all the visitors coming into town. Right now I got about maybe eight of these and I got about seven, eight, nine or ten prints. I'm working on more. The Blue Marlin is packed with people from all parts of the world and the owner, Ryan Duke, says businesses in the area can showcase what makes the capital city great. But it's going to allow these people that are coming into town to see what Columbia has to offer. There's so many people that have come in and said, we're going to visit the museum, we're going to the zoo, we're going to go out and see Lake Murray. A solar eclipse is the kind of catalyst to bring those people in here and actually show off what we do have to offer. In Columbia, Nick Jones, News 19. WLTX. It is not just Columbia, it's other areas of the Midlands. In fact, a handful of people already parked, ready to see the eclipse at Yonder Field in Orangeburg County. We caught up with a couple from Connecticut today who's here to witness this big event. Honestly, I had no idea what to expect about the whole thing. I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know if there was going to be like thousands of people on the road. They were seeing 7.2 million on the road. I had no idea. So. Yonder Field will have a full day of Eclipse events, complete with an inflatable obstacle course, live music, and a showing of the movie E.T. They're going to be handing out Eclipse glasses to the first 2,500 people who get there. We mentioned this earlier in the broadcast, but it bears repeating. The State Museum, they've been sold out for a while for tomorrow. Yeah. They, and they, they've got, a, they've got a, a good display over there, and it's going to be an interesting day at the museum. You know, it's really amazing how many events are going on that are now sold out. Spirit Communications Park, for instance, they've scheduled a baseball game, the Columbia Fireflies. They've got this huge pair of eclipse glasses. That's for display only. They don't really work. <laughs> um, at last check, they had some standing room only tickets. I'm not even sure if they have those remaining right now. So it's a sellout at Spirit Communications Park as well. Also a busy day expected at the zoo. And when we come back, I know you spent some time at the zoo and I you're going to be there tomorrow. Yes, I am. We'll be Looking talking about that. 
in just a moment. Yes, the Riverbank Zoo is expecting seven, maybe even 8,000 guests tomorrow. One of those guests will be our very own Jim Gandy. Why, why are you going? Well, I, I'm going to be there because they're actually conducting a study on the behavior of animals there at the zoo. And I was able to interview Dr. Adam Hartstone Rose on exactly how they plan to do that. So I'm really excited about this. We've put together interdisciplinary teams of observers. So there are going to be uh, groups of students. So I've got about 23, 24 students that are coming who we've trained in animal behavior observation. And they're going to be working with some of the wonderful volunteers here at the zoo um, who have a lot of experience here and know the animals pretty well. And those uh, two types of, of observers are also going to be coupled with the, the actual zookeepers who, of course, know the animals the best. And we're going to have each of these teams stationed at 12 of the different exhibits all throughout the zoo um, observing different animals including these elephants. So elephants, uh, what are some of the other species? So we're going to be looking at the gorillas and the baboons and the siamangs, these little rambunctious loud apes that we have, yeah. a lot of fun. Um, the elephants and the giraffes over here. We're going to be looking at the sea lions in their beautiful new home um, and then we're going to be looking at the grizzly bears wow. and we're also looking at birds and reptiles as well. Uh, how long do you think it will take before you you know, have results and that sort of thing. Well, that's an interesting thing. So we're going to have, you know, 40 plus observers for all this, and they're all going to be taking notes. We're also going to have the uh, visitor surveys. We might get hundreds or even thousands of surveys uh, from the visitors. Uh -huh. And so it's going to take a long time. It depends on how many of my students I can convince to help process all that data. <laughs> but within a few weeks, I think we'll know. I mean, obviously, sort of the day of and the day after, we'll know if there was anything amazing, like if the elephant started doing backflips or yeah. something crazy like that. But, you know, what we're really looking for are those subtle behaviors, and that'll take a little bit of time to process. So that's tomorrow for you yeah. out of the Riverbank Zoo. Yeah, and I'm going to be there with Lauren Thomas and Nick Jones. We're going to be we're going to be stationed at the Sea Lions, and I'm going to be a little bit jealous <laughs> because it's going to be hot and humid tomorrow, and their water temperature in that uh, yeah. uh, moat area is 64 degrees. Wow. If people are going to be outside tomorrow, they need to take proper mm -hmm. precautions because it's going to be a little toasty. That includes people tailgating in their RVs just across the street from the state fairgrounds. Chuck Ringwalt has that side of the story tonight. There's six of us and a baby out here camping. Gary Schwartz brought the whole family. They loaded up the RV and drove from Forsyth, Georgia to Columbia. Got to searching the internet and found this place through WLTX. Uh, campground out here at State Fairgrounds. His parents, Ken and Myron Nadine, have been planning the trip for weeks. Well, I've done a lot of things, been a lot of places since I'm 85 years old, but this is going to be my first total eclipse. Well, I felt good, but I've, I've felt like maybe we could have stayed at home. It was so far to come, and but uh, I'm glad we did, and I hope the weather's going to cooperate. Gary's son Zach says he's enjoying the relaxation away from work. Today will definitely be a few brews, maybe uh, soak up some sunlight, what have you, and uh, definitely going to throw some burgers on the grill later. But most of all, they tell me they're excited for enjoying the once in a lifetime total eclipse experience together as a family. It's, it seems pretty cool, you know, so I'm looking forward to it. In Columbia, Chuck Ringwald, News 19, WLTX. Chuck outside the state fairgrounds where it's going to be a busy day tomorrow, actually inside the fairgrounds. Still time for you to come on out and join us for the total eclipse tailgate with the South Carolina State Fair. Tickets cost just $5 a car load. Going to have those eclipse glasses while supplies last. Some live entertainment, plenty of food. Gates open bright and early at 9 tomorrow morning. We're going to be there until 4 o'clock at least, perhaps even later than that, later than that, depending on the day. Again, be sure to bring plenty of water to stay hydrated. For more details, you can head to the News 19 app. Also, the South Carolina Philharmonic Orchestra held a special concert dedicated to the Eclipse, playing music from Star Wars. We went out to the event and heard from people who were excited to witness the show. We're really big Star Wars fans. She loves watching the movies at home, you know, the different cartoon shows. I work at a music school, uh, so all combined, it was really nice. It was amazing. I mean, the conductor was outstanding from start to finish. I enjoyed mostly how the orchestra really bought into it, you know, with the, they put glow sticks on their bowstrings, so they had lightsabers, a lot of them dressed up, you know, obviously I'm 
enthused by people dressing up, so I'm glad they really got into the event as much as we did. They sounded just like the soundtrack did, which is impressive. I bought tickets the day they came out, which was like a year ago. So I've been counting down the days for a year now. <laughs> I'm just excited for the eclipse and everything, you know? It, everyone's come to Columbia, it's awesome. You're laying low and avoiding the crowds, <laughs> staying home and watching the eclipse. Hopefully it won't be cloudy. <laughs> I think our plan is to stay off the road. <laughs> we're, gonna be, we're gonna be working for the most of the day. We're celebrating with the eclipse, my wife's birthday, my mom's birthday, and then this one's birthday. Too. Uh, we're gonna go out to eat beforehand and then go to a park so we get a nice unobstructed view of the event itself. This is a really cool event. I'm glad that we had the, uh, the concert. All right, before we get a final check on the weather, Jim, we've got a statement from Richland County on the glasses that they have uh, handed out in Richland County. Let me just uh, briefly tell you, uh, they say they purchased the glasses from everything branded, an online retailer in New York. Before finalizing the purchase, they asked for assurances that the glasses were ISO certified. They even got a response from somebody at everything branded saying that uh, people can use the glasses without uh, hurting their eye. They contacted, though, the American Astronomical Society, uh, and they were walked on, they were on the phone and they walked them through on a website how to attain further assurances that the glasses were likely appropriate for eclipse viewing. So that statement coming to us from Richland County tonight. Again, we did our own comparison. It just seems like a lot more lights coming through those. You know, this is unfortunate yeah. because your eyesight is so important. So if you have not just theirs, but anybody's eclipse glasses, always make sure, first of all, that they're not damaged. Right. Can't have a scratch, can't have a pinhole. That's a no-no. Um, but if you have any questions about your eclipse glasses, don't use them. I've shown you ways to observe sure. the eclipse without looking directly at the sun. So take advantage of that. In fact, I'd do both. Right, and of course, if you just want to play it safe completely, yeah. just watch it on TV. I mean, we're going to be on the air all day. <laughs> we will. Uh, we're going to be on first thing in the morning on yeah. News 19 this morning yeah. and throughout the day and throughout the evening with live team coverage of this total eclipse. And right now, the weather looks like it's going to cooperate. You know, it does uh, everything that we've seen, uh, but the computer models keep throwing partly cloudy skies at oh. us. And, you know, if it's like today, all it takes is one cloud. Uh, I don't think there's much chance for rain. But well, we still have to deal with clouds. And like we saw today, at the time of totality, if it had occurred today, it would have been cloudy here at the station, but it would have been sunny at the fairgrounds. Yeah. Uh. So let, let's just hope that, you know, again, as the shadow approaches, it creates yeah. its own weather. And clouds have a tendency to dissipate just like they do when we head towards sunset. You know, oftentimes it'll be nice and cloudy right. and you head towards sunset and those clouds just kind of melt away. Well, that's what we may see tomorrow. All right, so we're 14 hours and uh, 49 minutes away from totality, but the partial eclipse begins right after one o'clock. That's tomorrow, right. Correct? Mm -hmm. one right. thirteen here in Columbia. All right, a busy day, an exciting day tomorrow. We hope to see you at one of the many events around the Midlands. Thanks for being with us tonight and thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live as well. It'll be a miracle now. There's nothing like, like totality. Uh, it's, it's almost otherworldly, <laughs> literally. Like nothing you've ever seen before. This is something that nature has uh, provided for us. Uh, it rivals any of the natural wonders on Earth, and so it should be enjoyed. Part, again is just witnessing the awesome majesty and I got fascinated by it.